Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. If this is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin and I'm really glad that you're here. Today I'm filming a beauty haul. Those of you who are regular viewers, this will basically form the basis of the additions that I tell you about when I do my inventory updates uh, over the coming weeks for quarter three. So this is everything that came in through July, August and September. There is quite a lot to get through because as you will know if you're a regular viewer, I went a little bit spend happy through to the sort of end of July. So uh, I did cut it off, I'm currently on a no buy. So if you aren't a regular viewer and you're new to my channel, then that's usually what I'm talking about is trying to buy less and use more. But this video is a little bit the antithesis of that, but it's a very rare kind of video on my channel. I don't often do big hauls and kind of glory in overconsumption in the way that this video will probably do a little bit. So yeah, if you'd like sort of more mindful consumption content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's get into what I bought in quarter three beauty wise. Now my hair is a little bit mad in this video, but I don't have any further time to spend trying to make it look the way I would like it to look because I am off this afternoon to see Paddington. So the first item that I'm going to tell you about is my Paddington perfume. Now, as you may be able to see, this is near enough done. I have just about got enough to top myself up from what I put on this morning um, to wear to go see the film this afternoon. I am really excited. I'm a huge Paddington fan, which was basically why I was interested in this. This is the Jo Malone Orange Marmalade Paddington collaboration. I don't think it's actually available anymore, but if you do see a bottle anywhere, this is a really lovely summer fragrance. So basically I wore it through most of summer. It was also very popular with other people in my house. So I didn't finish the whole thing on my own, but neither here nor there. It's not the sort of fragrance that would have appealed to me generally. I don't really care for a citrus fragrance, but although it is obviously, it's a citrus, it's orange marmalade, it, it's quite a warm citrus and it dries down to something sort of creamy and warm. I feel really wrong using this word in relation to a Paddington Bear perfume collaboration, but it's, it's almost kind of sensual on the dry down. Um, not necessarily like sexy date night, but like just something sort of warm and comforting and you know, makes you, you want to keep smelling it and get close to somebody's skin, that kind of sensuality. I really, really enjoyed this. If you do see it anywhere, I would definitely recommend grabbing yourself a bottle. If you like sort of warm, woody, creamy smells, that is. And if you are somebody who was put off of this because of the name and the citrus aspect, definitely worth sniffing it if you do ever come across it. Obviously the perfume itself was lovely, but I do just really quickly want to show you the packaging, which is just top rate. So the box that my perfume came in, so this was the box for the individual perfume. So it's like Paddington's picnic blanket. And then if you can see here, the little like elastic that keeps it together has a tog from Paddington's famous duffel coat on it. Um, so I thought that was absolutely adorable. And I actually got the Paddington perfume when I was in Liverpool and the very kind people at the Liverpool One Joe Malone also let me have one of the big boxes. We've got Paddington in the hot air balloon. Ignore my nails, they are a state they desperately need done. Um, along with him in the back of a Joe Malone taxi, marmalade sandwich on the, the picnic table print, train, jar of marmalade, London bus on the side, and the whole thing is very much like Paddington's trunk. That was very, very lovely of the very kind workers in the Liverpool one, Joe Malone. Sticking with perfume from Guerlain, I got another scent that has a nice sort of warm, like sensual dry down, although maybe more explicitly sensual this time. This was actually one of my birthday gifts. I'm not gonna differentiate between what I paid for myself and what I got for my birthday. This is not what I got for my birthday video. This is just all of the beauty stuff that I'm adding in to my beauty inventories for quarter three. So this is what the box looks like. Inside it is the Shalimar perfume, which I am a huge fan of. I actually have a bottle already, so I think, spoiler alert for next year's Project Pan, the existing bottle will be in there to get it used up so that I don't have two backups of the exact same perfume. There's also a little mini Shalimar here, which is just the cutest thing. I love mini perfume bottles when they are 
as this one is like a proper replica of the full size. I just think they are so adorable. And then I've also got the Shalimar body lotion in this. So that is my little Guerlain Shalimar gift set. I love Shalimar. It actually has similarities to the Paddington perfume in that it opens with a big sort of citrus burst, which I'm actually not overly keen on, but it dries down to just this warm vanilla sensual loveliness and again i think the word is sensual not necessarily sexy like it's it's warm and like nuzzly and mm. so although i think back in the day this was a very sexy scent apparently a uh, woman of ill repute used to wear it so much so that legend has it it actually got banned from certain upmarket hotels you couldn't go in wearing shalimar because of the association with ladies of the night. So I don't know what that says about me but I, th I think that's one of those interesting things about perfume is that at the time it was probably a certain way then it kind of fell into the, the zeitgeist as such and then people of like my generation have grown up smelling it on like their mothers and grandmothers so it doesn't necessarily have that sort of super sexy connotation to us anymore. Um, but I do absolutely love it. It's one of my favourite, favourite perfumes. I have got a couple of bits and pieces from Sculpted by Amy, which is a brand that is fairly new to me. I got my first things from them towards the end of last year when I went to their Dublin shop. But I have really enjoyed everything that I've tried, so I got a couple more bits. First and foremost, this is going to seem like a really boring thing to be shouting about, but I got this powder brush. And if I was filming a favourites video, this powder brush would be in it. I do actually want to film a favourites video, I feel like, sometimes because I'm so busy doing my project pans and updating you on what I've used up, etc. Or what I'm decluttering or whatever. I don't always kind of take the time to focus on what I'm just really enjoying. But this powder brush is so, so soft. But what I really like about it is that it's quite small, so I can get right in under my eyes with this brush you know, round the tip of my nose, etc. In the set I got last Christmas, which was like a foundation set, um, or like a base set, it came with a primer foundation, brush and powder. The brush that I got in that as well, which is like a dual ended one, I'll link it up below, is also absolutely beautiful and that it kind of made me think I'm going to be interested in the Sculpted by Amy brushes. So when my Real Techniques powder brush, which I have had for many, many years, finally kind of was shedding every single time I was using it and I had to admit defeat and replace it. I went to see what Sculpted by Amy had and I absolutely love this like smaller domed one. Super beautiful, washes really well. Definitely, definitely would recommend this. Now another brush that I got from Sculpted by Amy was actually the Deluxe Tanning Brush. So as you can see I am a very pale person. Every so often I decide to dabble in the fake tan. So I also got myself the Sculpted by Amy body base in the light matte and I got the brush to apply it. So I will see if I can find some pictures from my birthday, which I put this on for my birthday night out uh, and insert them. You will see the, the colour of it. It's To me it was really dramatic and I felt very tanned, but I think it's actually very light and very sort of natural looking. But if you are a fake tan novice, so I really like this because it's instant so I could see exactly where it was for a start. But this brush I think really made all the difference in getting a super even smooth application even for somebody like me who really does not do the fake tan thing very often at all. So this is what it looks like. So it's a really, really thick, dense brush, quite firm, and it's got this kind of, uh, what's the word? Like it's, like it's bent so that it'll contour around, like, you know, if you want to do the back of your legs or whatever, it's got, uh, you know, a sort of curve in it. So it really is excellent for kind of reaching in awkward places in your body. And yeah. I really think this made all the difference for, for the overall application. So I definitely would recommend the tan if you are looking for something instant and matte. They do have a shimmer version as well, which I haven't tried, but something instant and therefore quite foolproof. But I think this brush, no matter, even if you have a tan of choice already that you love, this brush could be very much worth investigating. Now, because I don't tan very often, my makeup products are all to suit this shade of deadly pale. <laughs> so one of the things that I also needed to get for my birthday night out was, or not one of the things, but some base products that would match the fake tan. So on the Sculpted by Amy live chat, I asked the question, I said, usually I wear a number one in your foundation. I'm buying the, the light matte self tanner. 
which shade of foundation would you recommend to go with that? And they recommended Fair Plus 2.5, which I think goes to show it's 2.5 out of however many. And I'm usually, theoretically, I could wear a 0.5 from Sculpted by Amy, but I just find the one a little bit less stark on my skin. I felt like 0.5 kind of matches my neck, which is very white. But I feel like one is just a little more flattering overall. So 2.5 is my tan shade, so I'm only 1.5 shades up. Although, I mean, to me, it felt very dramatic as I say. But this definitely was like a really good shade so the live chat was pretty spot on. So this is the Sculpted by Amy Second Skin Dewy Foundation. I went for this one purely because it came in a mini so I know I'm only going to use this size when I'm using the tan which will probably not be till like I'm on holiday or whatever next year now so there was no point in me purchasing a full size foundation. It is very dewy especially like I felt like at first when I put it on it was just nice and dewy but definitely at one point during the night I went to the bathroom and I was like oh my face looks wet. I am a very oily person. This second skin does come in a matte finish which would have probably been the better choice for me. The matte is less popular and doesn't come in the mini so I got the dewy one in the mini size obviously. The other thing I don't know if this is year round or if this was because my birthday is July so it was height of summer. Uh, there was a three for two on the minis so I got the mini foundation and then I also got two of the mini Hydro Glow hydrating serums one of which I've already finished so it's in my empties bag for quarter four. The last Sculpted by Amy thing that I've got is just a little free gift that I got which is a 5ml of their Beauty Base Protect. So this is their SPF primer. I really like the primers so I think the one that I got in my gift set last year was the Beauty Base Pearl which I really really enjoyed and I'm really enjoying this one as well and this is obviously the Protect one which is the SPF 50 which is a really good SPF to be putting on. I don't find this pills so obviously it's just a little sample size, I've only used it a couple of times but I feel like quite often the sort of SPF or smoothing, blurring kind of primers have more of a tendency to pill. This doesn't even feel like there's SPF in it. It's the same texture as the other primer that I have from them. It's really like liquidy, it goes on, it sinks in but it definitely kind of does something for your skin. It sort of creates that more even canvas but it doesn't feel like you've got anything on and it doesn't pill. So I think, so far I think I've tried the, just the two of the primers but I would be very interested to try more of her primers. I think she does base very, very well. Sticking with makeup and the fake tan thing, one of the other things that I got was this little mini NARS concealer. So basically I was looking for a mini concealer because as I said, this shade is not going to get used very much, you know, other than when I'm wearing fake tan. So it was really kind of what concealer can I get in a mini that led the charge rather than me actively looking for this one. But I have had a full size of this before. And I did really enjoy it. My full size shade was uh, Chantilly which is the lightest one but for my fake tan shade I got Vanilla which is shade light 2. So I think what I'll do is just all of my fake tan related products will just go in one box so that they're all together for when I want that look. I got two products from Charlotte Tilbury. Again these were both birthday gifts. First of all I got the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So my shade is 1 Fair obviously and that is what that one looks like if you haven't seen it before so I have used this and I really really liked it so far and um, this has been such a cult powder for so long and I had never gotten around to trying it so it was on my birthday list this year. The other powder that I am interested in although I have enjoyed this it's not squashed my interest is the hourglass powder. I won't be getting that until I have finished this one up but yeah I have really enjoyed this. I could see me happily repurchasing it but I haven't been so blown away by it that like it's ticked the box and made me think I'm no longer interested in the hourglass one. I'm still very interested in the hourglass one so that's my Charlotte Tilbury powder. And then I didn't ask for this but my grand must have picked it when she was buying the powder is one of the, or I'll probably get talked into it rather than picked it if I'm totally honest, but it's the Collagen Lip Bath and it's in the shade Rosy Glow. I've got a couple of these, so I've got this in Pillow Talk which I really like and I've got it in a peachy shade that I can't remember the name of but which I also quite enjoy. So this is quite a kind of natural one, there's no shimmer to this one at all unlike my others. It's very grey and dull outside today so the lighting is quite cool but that is that one there on the back of my hand. Wouldn't have picked this, wouldn't have asked for it as such but I'm sure I will use it up probably in a future project pan. The next thing is another thing I actually got for my birthday and it is a Victoria Beckham eyeliner. 
Now, I got the green one of this for my birthday from my friend Lauren a couple of years ago and it's just my favourite eyeliner formula. I absolutely adore it. So this year, I got the Cocoa one. I love that I'm showing you this box, if you can tell the, the shade, but the shade is on the box here. So Cocoa is, of course, the dark brown matte one. Um, so I do have it on today, if you guys can see that. I have just done it really lightly and smudged it out. It's such a beautiful formula in that you can really do that. You can apply a tiny bit and smudge it out and it will smudge a very long way. So when I say a tiny bit, I really do mean like a tiny, tiny bit. If you don't want to smudge it out, you can of course just do a line. If you've got hooded eyes like myself, you might want to keep them closed so that you let it set in position rather than opening your eye and it'll transfer and all of that jazz because you do get that playtime with it that allows you to smudge it out. So you do need to be careful if you don't want the smudge to let it set and not move it before it's set. But it's such a beautiful formula and once it's set, it is very much set. So you can see I have been using this. There's a tiny bit and if I use just the smudger on the other end, you will see exactly what I mean about how far this will go. As you can see, it's smudging out and obviously it gets lighter compared to the the unsmudged out swatch and um, but it really does retain its shade because I feel like sometimes you get things and you smudge them out and they smudge out to nothing this definitely stays brown as you smudge it out and as I say it's very buildable so you could do another little bit on top of it and smudge it out some more and just build it up that way so really really beautiful beautiful formula i'm so pleased to have a second one of these with the green one green is like my favorite color to wear so i do keep other eyeliners because i keep other shades of green um but i think my intention with this is basically to go through my eyeliners and get rid of all my other brown ones now that i have got this because i don't think i would ever reach for any of the other ones over this it's such a beautiful formula the shade is lovely it's just yeah i think my in my dream mind at some point in the future, I will have a super curated set of eyeliners and they will basically all be Victoria Beckham plus my other greens that I have and that'll be it. So yeah, she does a very good eyeliner. Topically related, I purchased this, the number seven eye makeup remover. This is actually a repurchase, so I finished the exact same product and replaced it with the same thing. So this is one of the bi-phase ones, so you shake it up. I have really sensitive eyes, I get eczema through my eyelids and my eyebrows and this doesn't exacerbate it at all but it does remove all of my makeup. So I've had this, I think this is maybe my third or fourth one, I've been loyal to it for quite a long time now. I also really like the Lancome one, so if you have tried the Lancome one and you like that one, this could be a more budget friendly alternative that I would really really recommend. And generally as well you pretty much always have some kind of number seven voucher or deal or money off or double points or something circulating in boots so yeah really really like this speaking of deals i got this which is a massive 500 ml of my favorite philip kingsley bodybuilding shampoo i actually got an excellent deal on this it was on brand alley and i got this for i think 27 pounds i absolutely love this bodybuilding range from philip kingsley i've got really fine hair it gets weighed down very very easily and this range is just perfect for washing it making it feel really clean the conditioner like definitely conditions your hair but it, none of it weighs anything down you know i feel like i've always got quite a lot of bounce and volume after using it and it's not technically for color treated hair but i do have color treated hair and i don't find that it strips my hair either so absolutely love this product and if you like Philip Kingsley, Brand Alley might be worth checking out. The other hair product that I got is something again that I got for my birthday. So this is from Colour Wow and it is their Extra Large Bombshell Volumizer. This is a hair mousse. I get completely sucked in by the marketing of this. I have a hair mousse already. I don't know what I thought this was going to do differently. It doesn't do anything differently to my normal hair mousse. So yeah, like it, it does what a hair mousse would do. It does give you a bit of volume and a bit of lift, a bit of hold, but not any more so than my Davines mousse that I already had so this was a bit of a waste in asking for this. I definitely get sucked in. I did already have the texturizing spray from Colour Wow. That is phenomenal. That really does it adds hold, it gives a bit of texture, it gives a bit of definition. That I love very much like could see me being very loyal to that going forward and I am still in spite of being not disappointed by this because it, it does its job but it just doesn't do 
anything miraculous that any other mousse wouldn't do. So I've had like an absolute winner that I've loved in the texture spray. This is like fine but I'm not blown away by but I'm still very very interested in the blow dry volume spray so if you've tried that let me know did it live up to the hype for you. I'm considering putting that on my Christmas list. I do have a blow dry volume spray at the moment but it is down to maybe like the last sort of quarter or even maybe the last fifth so I do think I'll be looking to replace it at some point and I am still interested in the colour white one even though this particular product hasn't blown me away. Another product that I haven't been blown away by is the scrub from this set. I got this little set for my birthday. It's from L'Occitane and it is the almond scrub, the shower gel which I've used for years and I'm a huge fan of and then like a scrubby mitt. I have been using the scrub before this video and I'm just, I'm not in love. It's not scrubby enough for me. I am like chasing that St. Ives apricot scrub that we all used, you know, 20 years ago or something. Now that's quite scary. Maybe not quite 20, but actually possibly 20 years ago. Yeah, when I was about 10. Yeah, that one. Chasing that level of exfoliation and scrub. I know it's not good for your face. We all know that now, but I would still be very interested in an equivalent but maybe slightly gentler but feels as scrubby kind of product for the body but this one is not it this is quite a gentle scrub so I don't think I will be repurchasing this however I am very pleased to say that I have got a bottle of this back in my life particularly heading into winter colder weather this is just so moisturizing so nourishing I absolutely love this so so pleased to have this back in my life. And then the final thing in the box, they're calling this a body buffer. So I haven't used this yet. I knew I was going to film this video, so I was trying to keep it good. So this is like one of those sort of textured ones. It's got a thing at the back to stick your hand up through so you can really apply a bit of pressure. So maybe I will light the scrub when I use it in conjunction with this. I didn't want to use this and then film the video because like, I didn't really want to show you I used body buffer, you know? So yeah, we'll see if I prefer the scrub once I'm using it in conjunction with this. Um, yeah, we shall see. Not technically going on my beauty inventory, but products that I think belong in this video. Candles. So it's definitely going into that time of year where you know we're all getting cozy, we're all getting hunkered down, we've got the electric blankets going. This candle. So I have the perfume of this already. So this is the replica by the fireplace. This is one of the few scents that I like in both a candle and a perfume. Burning wood and chestnut is the fragrance description. I have got a blog post about the perfume of this so I will link that up down below if you want to go and read it. The candle is basically exactly the same scent. You can see how much of this I have used. I have absolutely adored this. This will most definitely be repurchased. It's, it's just perfect for sort of autumn going into winter. It's, it's delicious smoky but like sweet smoky there's like a bit of vanilla like the chestnuts in there again if i was filming a favorites video this candle would 100 percent be in there it burns really really cleanly i don't know if you can see there's not um i think it looks like there's a massive rim around the outside but that's just what's kind of up at the sides it's not actually that it's like burnt down into itself the only thing i would say is it doesn't come with a cap and i have generally put a coaster over the top but I forgot to do that and then like got a bit of dust in it. Didn't think about it, lit the candle and kind of see where the dust is is like in the wax now, which was, was my fault. Not a smart move on my own part, but I would have appreciated if it had come with a lid. But overall, that that's me searching to find something to complain about. So yeah, 165 grams, slightly cheaper than like, not, not cheap, like still a expensive home fragrance candle, but slightly less than like a boutique or whatever. And the throw on it is just great. Even when it's not lit, this scents the room. So when it's lit, it's, it's scenting not just the room, but the corridor and a way down the stairs. So absolutely love this, would highly, highly recommend. A candle I have not even opened yet is the Diptyque Chantilly. I'll put it with you now. I didn't even want to take it out of the cellophane because the packaging, like the box is so, so beautiful. I might be a bit late showing you this because this is probably going to go away to make way for the Christmas collection now. So this was, I think, the cafe collection and this is what the, the glass is like. So this is just a really clean smelling one. 
it's like if you, you know the molten brown milk perfume if you know that there's there's similarities as you would maybe expect with something called for chantilly cream it's sweet but it's not um it's not as sweet as I thought it might have been. It's not like a vanilla cupcake candle or anything like that. Like I like vanilla and I like sweet, but I wouldn't want something too throtting like that. This is like sweet, but kind of clean and fresh sweet. Oh, so good. Mm, yeah, really excited to burn that one. I mean, just, just one more moment for the box, please. Like how lovely. I talked about this in my most recent empties, the Patchology breakout box. I had finished one of these, repurchased the exact same thing. So what I like about this is you get you get two of each of these spot stickers. So you get the hydrocolloid dots and then you also get salicylic acid ones. So I think they're for two different kinds of spots. Salicylic acid ones are a little bit more, I feel like that's more when you've got a spot that's got a head or even if you've got a particularly like sort of spot that's like in a pore, generally I get these on my nose where you need to like really get the sort of excess away. These are really, really good. And then the hydrocolloid ones, I feel like once they are healing up, the hydrocolloid ones kind of seem to speed the healing process. So two different types of spot stickers, which I really enjoy. And then you do also get pore strips in the box, which I'm not quite as fussed about. That is the Patchology breakout box. So you get four lots of spot stickers and four pore strips. I finished my daytime serum. I replaced that with this from Medicaid. This is their Super C Ferulic Potent Vitamin C Brightening Serum. This is what it looks like. I have been using it. Yeah, so far so good. No complaints. It's not irritating me. And when I bought that, Cult Beauty had a gift with purchase going on. So I needed to replace that and also needed to replace my SPF, which I went for this. So this was a repurchase. I've had this before. This is from Ultraviolet and it's the SPF 50 Supreme Screen Hydrating Facial Sunscreen. I've actually nearly finished this one now by the time I'm filming this video and showing you it. Uh, so as you can see it's uh, quite well used at this point and I will definitely repurchase this. This doesn't pill on me, it sinks in really quickly. I just really really enjoy it. It does actually come, so this is the 50ml size. I realised after I purchased this that it actually comes in a bigger size so I think going forward I will buy the bigger size of this. Really really like it, doesn't irritate my skin, I can take it right up next to my eyes and it doesn't irritate my eyes either so really really recommend this. And I bought that after I was using a Shiseido sunscreen that had really broken me out, it was a bad bad time. So I also at the same time as I was buying those two purchased this from Cult Beauty, it's from The Ordinary and it's their salicylic acid. 2% solution which I just got to try and help the breakouts go away so as you can see I have used a fair amount of it and I am really enjoying this. I am very very oily so I find like using this just is enough to sort of keep on top of getting me kind of too blackheady, too congested. I do need to remember to use it and I think because it's not, you know it's not like my vitamin C or my hydrating serums or like a retinol or anything that I kind of have on a sort of rotation in my mind. It's something that I sort of need to think to add in. I'm not the best at remembering to add it in until I get congested, which is when I'm slightly falling down. Um, but as soon as I do, I'm like, oh, we need to work that back in and it sorts me right out. So really, really liking this. And obviously the ordinary is very budget friendly. So we're here for that. But on to, I was going to say the last item that's very misleading, the gift with purchase that I got from Cult Beauty. So this is no longer on but for those of you who watch my inventory videos and whatever, all of this stuff needs added onto my inventory. So I do want to go through what was in the gift with purchase from Cult Beauty because there's, there's quite a lot. It was a good gift with purchase. First up, and I'm sure very welcome going into winter and dull skin time, from Sunday Riley, there was the CEO Glow Vitamin C and Turmeric Facial Oil. Now this looks like a huge box, but I think it's a 15ml. Yeah, it's 15ml that's in it, which I presume is not like the full size. I presume it's kind of like a deluxe sample size or a travel size. Big, massive box. I'm not usually a massive one for facial oils, particularly not in summer, but I'm sure I will get using this through the winter months and will probably be very appreciative of it something I've started using already and this is a full size. This is from a brand called Mother, which I had never heard of and don't remotely feel cool enough for. Their Up All Night Eye Cream. 
This is one of those eye creams that has a sort of pearl essence through it. So I've been using this in the morning. This is what the packaging looks like. And I will put a little, little bit on the back of my hand there. So if I spread that out, you can see it's got a little bit of a sort of sheen to it. Now I would say, as I've said, I've got really sensitive eyes. And if my eyes are irritated, that is a no-go for me, that eye cream. It doesn't seem to cause irritation on its own. It's if they're already flared up, something in that eye cream doesn't agree with me. But if they're fine, it's fine. It's not causing anything. It just, when they're already annoyed, they don't like it. So it's maybe not one for anyone who is super sensitive or reactive. But because I got it for free in the gift, I obviously will use it up. It just might take me a while, depending on the peaks and troughs of my eyes being irritated or not. Next up, there was a Kapari Ultra Restore Body Butter. I have not started using this yet, but little travel size body products are always welcome for going on holiday, etc. So I'm sure I will get through it. I have a little sample size of the Charlotte Tilbury Push Up Lashes. I will not be adding this into my makeup inventory because I've had this before and it smudges on me. So I will just be passing that on unopened to someone else. Something I was really excited for in the gift was this little box of the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Peel Wipes. So I've had these before. I really, really like them. I've actually been tempted many times to purchase a full size, but I've never quite committed because they are quite expensive. I'm always really, really glad whenever they're in a gift with purchase kind of scenario to let me get a, a go at them again. Another thing that I really wanted to try in this gift with purchase was this from Sweet. So this is the eyelash serum. I had visions of using this, but I'm gonna be honest, it's again, a little bit like the, the Ordinary Salicylic Acid. I've not worked it into my routine enough that I am automatically reaching for it. When I remember, I reach for it, but when I don't, it kind of goes unused. Ironically, given I'm holding a bag full of like minis and samples, I think what will help is when I have gotten through a lot of the minis and I have less products in my skincare box so that I have less to look at and my eye will be more likely to fall on this at night when I'm going through my skincare rather than thinking I have got, and this is like what's on my windowsill is my everyday skincare selection, there's still far too much in that selection. So I feel like sometimes I just don't see things and this has kind of fallen into that category. I've not, my eye doesn't fall on it, so I don't reach for it. It's a little bit stingy. It's not, it doesn't cause my eyes to react, but it's very much like put it on and sort of do a couple of very sort of deep breaths for a couple of seconds, fanning your eyes, letting it dry. Once it dries, it's absolutely fine. Again, not one for the super sensitive amongst us. Another really good thing in the gift with purchase was this from Medicaid. This is their Hydra B5 Liquid Rehydration Serum. So I have been using this as my hydrating serum. I have very nearly finished it actually. So I think this will be in my quarter four empties without too much of a problem. Probably will go back to my Kiehl's one. I feel like that does a little bit more in terms of the plumping, but I have enjoyed this and I, would, I wouldn't put anyone off trying it who wanted to try it. I have got a 1-1 Skin Rose Gold sheet mask always welcome going into festive season more sheet masks we'll always go through them at this time of year from amika the soul food nourishing mask a little 30 ml size from elmis their superfood glow priming moisturizer excited to try that erlen london copaju all over nourishing oil uh, this is white tea and cedarwood cedarwood i like white tea not so much so we will see if i enjoy this deluxe sample size of the Miller and gatz spf 30 so Again, I suspect I will finish this up and it will be in my quarter four empties. And the last thing in the gift was this little mini from Ritual Defee. Super, super cute. This is like a little balm that you can use on lips and cheeks. It's called their Colour Nectar Pigment Balm. The shade is Bee Sting. What a cute name as well. I'm really, really taken with the, the logo on the packaging. I think it's really, really pretty. Anyway, the camera battery is flashing at me, so I better wrap this video up. So. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending this time with me and I will see you in my next video. Bye.